Regardless if you've taken calculus or not, you've probably heard of this thing called the derivative. It's kind of like a monster under your bed, where the monster was bills because it scares your parents more than you. The truth is, it's like the coolest thing ever. So the derivative can be thought of as the rate of change at a single point. It kind of? Quick recap. The rate of change is how much the y value changes per x value of change. 4 over 3 means an x increase of 3 is a y increase of 4. Sick. Here's a formula. It takes two points and it moves the data like this. This is saying how much the y value changed between the two points over how much their x values changed. Basically, how to get rate of change from two points. This is all cool and stuff, except when you get to crazy functions, like x squared. Here's a question. What's the rate of change at x equals 2? Huh? I know, right? Weird question. I'm asking how much the y value changes when the x value doesn't change. That doesn't make sense. Despite this, it's still kind of possible. So to find rate of change, we need two points on a line, right? So let's draw a line that only touches our parabola at x equals 2, since the slope of this line will actually be the rate of change at this point. Now, I'd like to take another point on this line and just be done with this, but we can't, since we wouldn't know its exact y value. We do know some y values on this curve, though, so let's take, hmm, x equals 3. Draw a line, and eh, the lines are too different. If we find the rate of change of this line, which we could, it's not really going to be accurate to this one. So let's choose one closer, like, I don't know, 2.1, and draw a line. Huh. When we move the second point closer, the line between them was more like the line we want to find at x equals 2. So here's an idea. Let's call the distance between the two points h. When the distance between the two points, or h, gets closer to 0, its line becomes more and more accurate to this line, the line we want. In other words, as h approaches 0, our line gets more accurate to the rate of change at x equals 2 a single point. We'd write it as this in class, but I don't want to scare you and our answer is going to be the same anyway. It's just the proper way of writing stuff. So now, point 1 will be 2 and its y value will be 4, and the second point can be 2 plus h, and the y value of it can be represented like this. So now we can plug these into a formula and find the rate of change. Almost. We're going to have to kick this h out of the denominator, or else we'd be dividing by 0. Since we could just subtract these 2s, and if we plug in a value of 0 for h, kapew! We're really not supposed to get h out of here without writing this, but for the purpose of just learning the concept, it's not too important. Now let's solve the math. This would become this, which we can expand out, which would become this. We can subtract these 4s, and look, we can divide an h out from everything. Do that, and if h was 0, the rate of change would be 4. But we can do better. Let's replace 2 with x, so we can find the rate of change for x squared of any x value. Do the same thing, and now we can see for any x value in x squared, we just have to take the x value and multiply it by 2. In fact, we can just use this formula to find the derivative for any function when it exists. It's almost too good to be true, right? It seems like you found a loophole in math, but in reality, it's just a lot of clever thinking from this guy. Or maybe it was this guy. Actually, it was kind of both. Awkward.